welcome back following up on our discussion or our list of ancient African empires I wanted to talk a little bit more about each of those empires individually and what you know is that to understand someone's mythology we want to understand who those people were what was contemporary with their timeline their culture their environment were they at war were they at peace were they under famine what who was the rulership of the particular time that produces mythology so in that effort we will look a little deeper at each of the mythologies starting of course with the comedic civilization uh, which we know as a civilization based along the Nile Valley River so North Africa in its geography significant in its timeline is that fossil records show us that homo sapiens were living in southern and eastern portions of Africa anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000 years uh, prior to that time and around 50,000 or 60,000 years prior to that time they began their launch from sub-Saharan Africa to what would eventually lead them through North Africa and beyond so settling along the Nile Valley River and later the Indus Valley River and so forth uh, the Yellow River and, and other establishing other uh, valley civilizations itself lasted from approximately 3500 BCE and ended roughly 330 BCE at the hands of the Persians although there had been many leadership and rulership changes throughout uh, you know what was a turbulent but very long history the significant tribe would be the Dogon tribe who fled this area after the invasion of the Persians and carried the original sacred beliefs of these people and continue to practice them in terms of sacred texts we know of the book of coming forth by day and in timeline wise the other things that were going on in that time the significance of this timeline includes 3250 bce this comedic civilization would develop the making of paper based on papyrus reeds in 3200 BCE, the same civilization would develop the system of writing known as hieroglyphics. In 3114 BCE, this would be the start of the Mayan calendar. In 3100 BCE, would begin the work of the structure known as Stonehenge. In 3000 BCE, we would see the establishment of the Yang Shao Dynasty, which would, the, which would be the earliest Chinese civilization established. And also in 3000 BCE, we would see the development of the city-state civilization of the Sumerians along the Fertile Crescent. This also is at a crux of the beginning of the Bronze Age, which occurs around 3000 BCE to 2500 BCE. And this brought significant advances in urbanized civilizations, the working of bronze, uh, extended productivity of agricultural work, and, in, and the development of ways of communication we saw with writing. In terms of structure, this civilization that we would call the Kimites were noted for the establishment of the first pyramids, which were, were built in roughly 2700 BCE. We know that the pyramid, pyramids of Gaza were built roughly 2600 BCE, and there will be a succession of many pyramids to come, including structures such as the Sphinx, which is known, uh, known as Heru and Akat. The reason we look so closely at the civilization is in its contributions, both mathematics and agriculture but more specifically writing it being the first written form of communication uh, from any civilization in the world so there is great significance in that but what i think has carried for the interest in this area is its secret knowledge held within its writings its tablet structures and its tombs and then in the faith that they brought into the world the introductions of the idea of the netters who were beings who represented the forces of nature on our world but who were themselves who were themselves products from the serious star system 
And these are myths and legends that have had great influence on mankind ever since the, their establishment by the Kemetic civilization and later when they were changed and altered through Greek conquerors who would come along later. But we know the ideas of, we know the names of Aset, who some will call Isis, Asar, who would be known as Osiris, Heru, who the Greeks would call Horus, and the many interpretations of these netters as more godlike physical beings. But it's because of the knowledge and symbolism and ideology that we get from the Kemetic people that we continue to look at their culture for answers. Having a greater understanding of what was going on in the world around them, with them, and contemporary to them gives us a better handle on interpreting what their mythologies and religions ultimately meant to them. Thank you again for stopping in at Nine World Chronicle. I will continue talking about the civilizations that we established early. And again, the reason we talk about this civilization is what's reflected in what we would call Kemetic and Egyptian mythology. Please be sure to watch some of the other videos. And as always, we ask that you like and subscribe.